Hello, everybody. Happy Halloween. Can you guess who I am? People usually ignore the strange and unusual. I myself am strange and unusual. Um, yes, Lydia Dietz from Beetlejuice. That is my costume today. Happy Halloween. Halloween's a bit different this year for, um, particularly for us in Melbourne, we can kind of do stuff, but not a lot. So uh, tonight, my kids and I, we're dressing up, we're going to do some lolly hunts at home, use the torches in the dark to find the lollies and uh, play like some scary music over the speakers and things like that. So um, yeah, that's what, what we're doing for Halloween. But yeah, we're going to have a little bit of a discuss. Uh, la, 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 la. Start that again. We're going to have a little bit of a discussion about Halloween, and I'm just going to get rid of that. Uh, but first, I know most of you are probably tuning in because you want to know if you have won the LLIFS Halloween competition. So there were lots of entries, and basically I gave uh, people the opportunity to win a copy of one of my books of their choice or of issue 27 of Haunted Magazine. And all you had to do was make sure that you liked the Facebook page, liked the post, and then commented which one that you wanted. So there were lots of entries. And because there were lots of entries, I decided to give away three winners. Happy Halloween to Leslie and Nicole. Hello. All right. So first, I'll just quickly tell you a little bit about each one of these. If you don't win, there are plenty of copies available, so you can buy them from the LLIFS shop and I'll sign them and send them out. And if you want more than one, and I'm going to pop up another banner here that I have done, which basically gives you the information on how you can buy copies of Haunted Magazine in the books. So the first book, Stuff Paranormal Investigators Need to Know, it takes a more rational approach to paranormal investigating. Um, a few of you commented that this was the book that you wanted to win. And basically, yeah, it's all the different things that can make us think that something paranormal is happening. So it's really interesting and important information that we as paranormal investigators need to know, hence the title. Um, I'll tell you some of the chapters just so that you get a bit of an idea of what's inside. So it is split up into four different parts. You've got visual experiences. So that covers things like pareidolia and peripheral drift vision, when you see something out of the corner of your eye and all that kind of stuff. Part two is about the auditory experiences. So you've got um, audio pareidolia and things like that and um, a condition actually called misophonia. And it's where a sound can literally make you snap. And quite often on investigation, um, people will sometimes like have a really angry outburst and you'll think, oh, that's really out of character for that person to do that. Maybe they are being affected by a spirit. But it's important to know it could actually be this misophonia. So it could even just be the sound of someone breathing next to them can actually cause them to have an emotional and physical reaction. So it's it's really interesting. Part three is all about memory and perception. So you've got things like power of suggestion, false memories, our unconscious bias, all that kind of stuff. And then part four is the actual physical responses, so the way our body reacts to our surroundings. So um, white noise, for example, has an impact on our brain. When we are exposed to high levels of EMF is another example. So that's all the kind of stuff that you will find in Stuff Paranormal Investigators Need to Know. So uh, hopefully maybe someone has won a copy of this. I'm not sure yet. We'll know when we draw the winners. Now, I'm going to actually, guys, take this wig off because it's getting in my eyes and it's actually really, really itchy. But you got the idea of what my costume was. And now I can be um, me again, <laughs> which is probably less uh, frightening. So the next book that was up for grabs in the competition was Supernatural Synchronicity. Um, happy Halloween to Perseus and Jody and Mike and Natalie. Thank you for joining. Supernatural Synchronicity. So this was the second book that was up for grabs in the competition. And this is a book that I wrote with fellow UK blogger Ashley Nip. And it's basically us having a discussion about the paranormal. And the way it came about was we started chatting and we would chat all the time and, and just about different things going on. What do you think about this? And we would go back and forward and we 
basically kind of thought, well, why don't we turn that into a series? And so we actually wrote this as a, as a mini blog series. And then when it was finished, we kind of thought, well, it's not done. And we wanted to add more to it. So the book Supernatural Synchronicity was born. So again, I'll tell you some of the chapters, just so you know what it's about. So we talk about what causes paranormal phenomena, uh, what the source of it could be. Um, we look at uh, seeing the unseen and understanding the unknown. What part does the pineal gland play? Uh, precognition versus psychic projection. So that's something I actually spoke about on the blog the other day. Ghosts of the mind. Um, we look at our soul. Um, look at what defining intelligent spirit communication actually is. Uh, we then look at the impact of time. So a lot of people think, you know, time works differently perhaps on the other side than it does here. And um, are, we, are we experiencing things like time slips and things like that? Uh, we then go into could one universe affect another? Unperceived existence in the paranormal. So that's actually one of my favourite topics. And it goes on the premise of looking at if a tree falls in the forest and there's nobody around, does it still make a sound? Because there's actually no one there to physically hear it. So it's it's just, you know, getting into a bit of philosophy and those kind of things. So that is what Supernatural Synchronicity is about. And I know a few of you selected that as your preferred choice for the competition. So good luck. The next book that was up for grabs is the LLIFS Guide to EVP. Now, this is a really, really in-depth guide. And interestingly, it actually started when a few weeks ago I ran what was called EVP Week. And I basically published a bunch of articles um, all themed around EVP. And again, when I finished that week, I thought, you know what, I am going to go much more in-depth about EVP and put it all into a book. And so it's basically a really in-depth guide. Um, it starts off telling us about the history of EVP, who even came up with the term EVP. Um, that may surprise you. A lot of people probably don't know the answer to that. And um, it talks about the first EVP that was supposedly recorded back in the early 1900s by a shaman. It looks at different recording methods. And one of the things I actually find really interesting is the pioneers of EVP research, and there's actually information about them as well. They actually felt that recording with a microphone was one of the most unreliable methods of doing recordings. And they actually found that they had better success with using things like carrier waves and things like that. So the book covers all of that. And um, that's my son over there, <laughs> if you see an arm flailing about. So hi, Jake. Hi. <laughs> um, and there's different experiments, different recording methods. Um, it even goes into technical information like frequencies that can interfere with your recordings, what sampling rates and things can do to your recordings, all that kind of stuff. And at the back, there is also sections for you to take notes. And there's also some preview reports, a bit different to see, EVP um, report preview and, and things like that. So it's a really in-depth guide that you can hopefully make your own by recording your own notes and take it with you out investigating with you. So we've got some new people that have joined. Happy Halloween, Maxine, to Andrea, to Angie. Perseus says, hi, Jake. Yes. <laughs> you read it. Natalie, looking good as blonde too. Yes. I, I just, I can't, I can't deal with the, with the black wig. <laughs> it just, I don't know. I don't like it. So they were the three books that were up for grabs. And also up for grabs was issue 27 of Haunted Magazine. And so you'll see on the front, you've got Dr. Kieran O'Keefe, who some of you may remember from the TV series Most Haunted. He was what you would call the resident skeptic um, is, and he is a parapsychologist. And he has actually written a wonderful spread about paraethics. And that's obviously a topic that he is quite passionate about and he's been lecturing about and talking um, about quite a lot lately. Um, and he's also written some academic papers on paraethics as well so that's a really interesting topic and there's also lots of stuff in here from different writers all around the world um, from stories to recaps of investigations um, there's a thing in here about different kinds of equipment you can use so that's in there um, so I still have some copies of issue number 27 left as well so um, and there's also an article I'm just trying to find it and I'm probably not going to be able to there was also an article from me in there and um, if I can maybe you'll just have to buy it and see it <laughs> 
So good luck, everybody. And so I've already preloaded. I did a bit of a random draw before. And I um, have preloaded them into StreamYard. So the names are about to start scrolling at the bottom of there. So I've picked three winners at random using a random generator. And so whichever they have picked, whichever item they've picked, they are going to win a free copy of. So congratulations to Natalie Land, Sarah L. Little, and Rachel Lindquist, you are the winners of the LLIFS competition. Yay. Yay. So let's have a look at what they selected. All right. So do you want to talk? Sure. Yeah. So what has Natalie won? Just right there. The um, Land Haunted Magazine. Natalie, you've won. Haunted Magazine, congratulations. All right. Now what about this one, Sarah, our little, what has she won? Haunted Magazine. Another Haunted Magazine, Sarah, our little, congratulations. So that's two copies of Haunted Magazine. All right, and who is the third? What has Rachel Lenquist won? Supernatural... Synchronicity. So, Rachel, you have won a copy of Supernatural Synchronicity. Oh, Natalie, you wanted to. Okay, Natalie, we can change that. That's not a problem. If you want um, the Supernatural Synchronicity, I can I can organise that. Not a problem. I might have written it down wrong. So, Natalie has won <laughs> Supernatural Synchronicity. Rachel has won Supernatural Synchronicity. And Sarah L. Little has won Haunted Magazine. <laughs> Yay. So for anyone that would still like a copy um, of any of these, you can head to the LLIFS shop and you can pick up a copy. And I'm going to put the banner at the bottom as well. Um, again, just to show you because if you have... Um, if you want to buy more than one, they're actually a lot cheaper. So send me a DM or a message and um, we can we can sort that out because the website isn't set up to do multiple purchases at the moment, but it, it can do uh, single purchases. And while we are on that, I wanted to show you guys as well. This is the new issue of Haunted Magazine. So this was sent out to um, all of the people that did a pre-order that was sent out to you guys yesterday. So I'm hoping people will start receiving that on Monday. And one of the highlights of this magazine is featured in Truth Seekers. We were watching that last night, weren't we? Yeah. What did you think of it? Come over here. It was good. Do you want to be on camera? No? You just want to be a voice? Yeah. Okay. Watch. Yeah, so I watched it last night with my son, Jake, before we watched The Mandalorian. We watched, I think, about four episodes of Truth Seekers, and it was really cool. We, we liked it, and it's the typical humour that you would expect um, from these guys. Um, they were the makers of shows like Hot Fuzz and Shaun of the Dead, so it's that kind of humour, but it actually tells a really interesting story as well and enough to kind of really draw you in. And you can't help when you watch it to kind of make comparisons and go, oh, you know, I know someone that that does something like that, or you think, oh, God, that's, that's me. So we we kind of have a bit of a laugh um, about it. And one of the really cool things about this issue is there's a little bit of an Easter egg inside. So it's like two magazines in one. So you have this pull-out edition of what is called the white sheet. And the white sheet is a bit of an Easter egg and it's a special magazine that is in the show, Truth Seekers. And so you can actually get what we're saying is the lost edition of the white sheet inside this magazine. So that's really cool as well. Um, I have a feature in here, um, which is a lovely three-page fe feature, which is really exciting. And it's talking about a location here in Melbourne called Tasma Terrace and uh, just some information about a really interesting story from there and um, what happened when I went to investigate that. So that was really interesting. So I don't have many of these left. It is selling really fast and I've got more orders that I've received today. So uh, if you can, Place, place your order soon because I expect 
probably in the next week or so once everyone starts watching this show they're gonna want this because it's going to be a bit of like a collector's item so these are $18.99 with free postage Australia wide and again head to the LLI official and the people that have won um, something in the competition I'm going to send you a message and um, you guys can give me your address and, and we'll go back and forth and if you are, are not watching live or you haven't tuned in you're still going to get your prize you didn't have to to tune in to get that so that is fine now, one of the things I wanted to have a quick chat to you guys about since we're all here is I wanted to get your thoughts on what you think about the concept of Halloween and the full moon because tonight we have a full moon. Yes. And what's special about tonight's moon? Um, it's Halloween. It was Halloween and it's a blue moon. Cool. So you have three, like, events where people tend to think, oh, maybe these affect paranormal activity. A lot of people tend to say that um, on Halloween that the veil is the thinnest and other people also uh, tend to say that three days before and three days after a paranormal investigation, um, that's when we have the most activity and things like that. So I wanted to talk to you guys and get your opinion. So tell me in the comments below, do you think that Halloween is a more active night or do you think that it's just a bit of hype? What do you think, Jake? Hype. You think it's hype? Yeah. Mary, it's raining here so I won't see it. Oh, that's a shame. I hate it when that happens. Whenever there is like a really good super moon or something like that, particularly here in Melbourne because our weather is so unpredictable, we tend to uh, miss out on a lot of those events, unfortunately. But I'm bringing up now um, an article that I'm going to just quickly talk to you guys about and I'll share it a bit later on and it's called The Myth Behind the Moon and it's just some information about the moon and whether or not it is actually connected to more paranormal activity or not. So I've got here that, you know, once a month that paranormal investigators tend to get excited and believe they're in for an exciting and wild night of activity. Perseus, mum agrees as an emergency services worker. Yes, and that's something I'm, I'm going to get into because as well, um, a lot of like doctors and as you said, emergency services workers, they, for some reason, people go mad when there is a full moon and Actually, earlier this year, Jake, who has just walked off, he split his leg open and he needed stitches. And so we had to go to the hospital and this was just before COVID um, was hitting Melbourne. So luckily we didn't have to worry about any of that. And we went to the emergency room and it was just insane. I'd never seen the emergency room so busy. And we ended up having to wait about eight hours um, for him to get his stitches and then they couldn't do his stitches and we had to come back. It was a whole saga and they were just like, it's a full moon. It's just, it's one of those nights and they expect to be busy. So Nicole says, I think it's a celebration of those who have passed away. And definitely a lot of people treat um, today and tomorrow, uh, the 1st of November, um, as the time to honour their loved ones. And they, um, particularly when you look at the Day of the Dead, and they have what's called an ofrenda, and they'll have an altar, and they'll put photos of their loved ones. Um, some people cook food and gifts, um, put gifts, and all sorts of things um, to honour their loved ones. And there's actually a movie, and it's a movie you like, Jake Coco. Do you remember Coco? Yeah. And that was about the Day of the Dead Festival? Yeah. That was a pretty, that was actually a really nice movie and it made me cry as most uh, movies do. Leslie, full moon is definitely crazy for first responders. And I, yeah, I hear that all the time. And, you know, I wonder why that, why that is. Now, when we look at the moon, um, no one actually really knows where the moon came from and why we have only one when other planets seem to have more. So one of the many theories surrounding the moon, do you know where the moon comes from? Jake's a bit of an expert about yeah, space. I, I know where it came okay, from. Okay, so where did the moon come from? So when Earth was being formed. Come over here so they can hear. So when Earth was being formed, of course, little pieces of rock smashed together to make Earth. Mm -hmm. So when that was happening, rings went around the Earth because of gravity. Mm -hmm. So then they all start crashing together to make the moon. Okay. 
There you go. That's where the moon came from, from Mr. Jake Trumacero. He is obsessed with um, planets and space and stuff like that. So, um, and this is pretty much exactly what I had written down. Well done, Jake. One of the many theories is that the moon was created when an object the size of Mars collided with Earth and the moon was basically what was the leftovers yeah. that were smashed together. So he was right. He's, he's, he surprises me sometimes. He'll tell me things and I'll say that's not true and I'll Google it and he's right. He always likes to prove me wrong. Um, now, while we don't know its specific origins, we do know that it is really important for us to have a moon. We know that the moon orbits around Earth and that the Earth itself slowly rotates. The side of Earth that is facing the moon feels a larger gravitational pull. Exactly. And yes, and this affects water and the tides are pulled in that direction. So that is why we have high tide twice a day and low tide around six hours later, depending on what stage the Earth is at in its daily rotation. So when you go to the beach, this happens to me all the time, you go to the beach and then you're sitting there and then all of a sudden you're surrounded by water and you're like, it wasn't like this a couple of hours ago. That's the tide and that's the effect of high tide and low tide. And so without the moon, there would not be such a large difference between the two. It would just kind of be a constant. So Mike says, I think that because we're especially stimulated on Halloween with sights and sounds that remind us of mortality and things that go bump in the night, that's what's being experienced. Oftentimes might be psychosomatic in origin. You know, I really like that response, Mike. <laughs> and, and it's true. And I wonder, you know, are we even project, projecting our expectation? And again, if we're um, so... Um, I guess, yeah, focused on, on that point. Are we making activity happen ourselves, you know, psychically projecting it? So actually I really love that, that answer. Now, it's thought we might not survive without the moon, but in our lifetime that's probably not something that we're going to have to wait and find out to see. So in itself the moon goes through a monthly lunar cycle and it takes 27.3 days for the moon to fully orbit Earth. At the beginning of the cycle, the moon is so close to the sun that the side of the moon facing Earth is not illuminated because the moon is sitting in between the sun and the Earth. By the time you reach the end of the cycle, the moon is sitting behind the Earth and that's when you get a full moon. As the sun sets, the moon rises and with that side fully exposed to the sunlight, that's why you have a full moon. Now, the actual lunar cycle takes 29.5 days to complete, which is 2.2 days longer than it takes for the moon to orbit Earth. So that's your, that's your science lesson for today. The moon also cleans your crystals so they re Yes, yes. So when you want to, I've got so many crystals up there. Um, a lot of people put their crystals out in the moon to cleanse their crystals and people also make uh, moon water. Um, again, used for um, blessings. And there's a lot of people that are pagans and will um, practice um, different ceremonies under the light of a full moon. So a full moon is very, very powerful for a lot of people in different ways. Even that link to werewolves and the full moon, yeah. Well, I am reading off research that I have done, but I did write all this myself. <laughs> I, it's, it's not all completely stored up here. Um, all right, so let's look at some of the myths uh, surrounding the moon. So now we're going to go into a little bit of mythology. And this is something that I talk about in Supernatural Synchronicity as well. So the moon itself is known as Selene in Greek mythology, and she shines a light through the darkness. So I always love that because I love the phrase, there is always light within the darkness. And that, I guess, is what the moon does, right? So Silas in Greek, and I'm probably pronouncing these wrong, um, commands the tide of the ocean with her magnetic pull. The lunar cycle allows her to visit the earth eight times a year, beaming her magnificent silver light from her ethereal silver chariot, which is carried by two snow white horses. And she, this has actually inspired many poets. And Celine makes a full moon what is considered to be a romantically enchanting experience. There was also the Roman goddess of the moon who was called Luna and she had a chariot that she rode in the darkness of the night and it's from Luna that words like lunatic and lunacy are thought to have come from. Medical professionals for thousands of years believed that there was a strong connection between manic behaviour and the moon. So in the 19th, uh, sorry, the 18th century in England, people that were put on trial could actually plea for a lighter sentence by stating their behaviour was due to the full moon. During certain lunar cycles, patients in mental hospitals were shackled and restrained as a precaution as it was thought that the energy from the moon fueled their mania. 
The moon itself is also extremely relevant to pagans and they often plan magical workings around different times of the lunar cycle and it's thought to be connected to wisdom and intuition. So there are a lot more deities that are related to the moon, but I have selected the really popular ones and I wanted to highlight Luna because, again, just the connection to lunacy and lunatic, um, again, goes back to that thought that it is, you know, kind of influencing people. Now, a lot of people tend to think that three days before and three days after a full moon is when paranormal activity is at its highest and i have to wonder if that is actually true or not so um it makes me wonder like if we were out investigating would the things have still happened if it wasn't where it was on the moon cycle and you know i don't know unless we're taking down the actual data we're not actually going to have like a full answer to that. So if it was true, for example, how could that actually happen? Like why would would that be? Um, so one of the, I guess, theories that I've looked into is that as humans, around 60% of our makeup is actually water. And a lot of um, spiritual people that are quite spiritual comment that the energy of the moon has an actual physical effect on them physically and mentally as well and on their mood. So in the same way that a lot of people feel that they're affected by Mercury in retrograde, a lot of people are also feel that they're affected by that pull of the moon and they'll think, oh, I'm just feeling like crap. Oh, it's, it's, it's the moon. So is that gravitational pull actually having an effect on our physical bodies because we have that 60% of water component? It's, it's just a theory, just a theory. So I'm going to go back to what Mike said because that was something I'd written about. Again, are we when we expect something to happen, are we making it happen? So either we are going in thinking, oh, tonight is three days or three um, before or three days after the full moon. We, we're in for a really big night tonight. Um, are we making that happen unknowingly? Or are we misinterpreting it to happen? Or is it really happening? Like these are the one of the things that we don't know. And I also wonder if it's not necessarily just the moon, if it's the weather, because a lot of people also tend to say that a thunderstorm fuels paranormal activity because you're getting a lot of that static electricity and things in the air. So um, could it actually be more about the weather in, instead of just the moon? And I like to look at what we call the stone tape theory. So the stone tape theory works on the premise that certain materials such as, such as stone can record our residual energy um, and especially of that of which is a traumatic such as something like a murder or where, where some sort of trauma has taken place and when the conditions are just right so when you've got the humidity and the temperature and the barometric pressure pressure is all correct and and where it needs to be it can actually set the wheels in motion where that energy is released from the stone and you, you get kind of this playback and it, you end up getting kind of what is what investigators call this residual energy where it's just the spirit, I guess, isn't aware that you're there. You're kind of just experiencing some playback in time. And so that's one of the theories um, as to how the stone tape happened. And so uh, is the moon just a component of that stone tape and and that's what we are experiencing so it's just it's just another kind of thing so i think when we are looking at theories and we're going oh you know thunderstorms do this moons do this um like a ghost sleep exactly and stone masons build their temples on this theory that is a very very interesting concept statistically i can give you as a firefighter full moons are our most common statistical call out to approximately 3 a.m. That is really, really interesting. So I wonder why that is. Like, why do you guys think that is? Why do you think that, um, like, in emergency services and things like that, or people just go a bit nuts when there's a full moon? Like, what do you think it is? Like, I have my water theory. Like, that's just sort of what, what I think could be a, a link there. But I'd love to hear from you guys, like, what you think is a reason for that link with the moon.
So we know that the moon can have an effect on a person from its gravitational pull, um, but other elements affect us as well. So low level frequencies affect our bodies, atmospheric pressure affects our bodies. So all of these things make us think that something paranormal is happening. And so does the moon do the same? Does it actually just make us kind of react in a way that makes us feel that something paranormal is happening rather than something paranormal actually happening? Maxine, can I ask you a question about the 3 a.m. challenge? Yep, you can go ahead. Um, happy to answer any questions that anybody has. Um, so I think we, within all of us, like obviously we all have different levels of sensitivity to things and we all have different views and things like that. So I think the best way to move forward with our theories um, is to, to to take down data. And I'd love if people could just, you know, if you fill out things like what we call investigation reports and you're putting down like the date, the time, the weather conditions, where we are in the moon cycle and things that have happened that night. And so then you can actually kind of work out what, what things are happening on your investigations. Is there a pattern? Are you finding that, yes, it is more active once a month? Um, is it true that the 3AM is real? I don't believe... Um, I don't know much about the 3 a.m. challenge. Um, I would say it's probably more hype than anything most of those challenges are. Um, but if you if it's something that you are scared of doing or if you if you do believe that it's real, then I would stay away from doing it because you can end up kind of just getting yourself in a in a state of mind. Um, but I, I don't believe in in those kind of, of challenges personally. Um, I think that it's perhaps the energy from the gravitational pull is much stronger. So for people that may be susceptible, this ends up going a bit wild. Yeah, that's kind of what I what I think as well. Um, and just, you know, when I talk about or talk to people that are quite spiritual, they seem to be really, really affected by the um by the moon and things like that. So um that's that's sort of I, I tend to agree with that as well. So I also, when I have spoken to a lot of people um, about this and um, there's a group that I'm in which is um, Women Worldwide of the Paranormal, um, so it's a great place to be if you are a woman in the paranormal because you're, you're amongst a really empowering group of, of women. And um, I do a lot of research myself on a connection between female hormones and the paranormal. And... I have previously done a, oh, Mark has got a big comment, so we'll share that. Since we've evolved from creatures that came from the deeps, maybe the moon triggers a kind of cellular memory from within us as well. Some physical anthropologists have even said that there are indications that we may have evolved from aquatic apes, a strange theory but worth mentioning. That's fantastic, Mark. I love that, and I am going to look into that myself because I love that. Thank you. <laughs> we're, Mark and I, we're always on the on a very, very similar level. So I do um, love that. And cellular memory, like that is such an interesting area and one that I love looking into as well. So going back to female hormones, a lot of women seem to feel like they have heightened experiences at certain time of the month linked you know, to their hormones. And I know at different times of the month, for example, I um, get really bad migraines and they're hormonal migraines. Um, and so I wonder, like, what if there is a connection or misunderstanding between our hormones and the moon? Now, obviously, men get affected by the moon as well, um, but men have hormones as well. So what if it is a hormonal thing that is affecting us and it just kind of coincides with when, when moon is? And you also have to look at like when you have females and things like that, people can sync up with their circles. So are we kind of synced up in a hormonal way with the moon? Um, so my studies have been specifically on female hormones. And as I said, male males have hormones too, obviously. Um, but, you know, does that gravitational pull have an effect on our hormones? Like these are things that we don't know. So, again, I would love if people could start like just writing things down. Like even if you have a journal, I have a journal. This is actually my journal, the Handbook for the Recently Disease. Deceased. I was going to say diseased. I've seen Betelgeuse too many times. Um, and I actually, I'll show you, I actually have in my journal um, because I'm learning tarot, I've actually got um, all tarot cards and, and tarot meanings and stuff in my journal. Um, so that's really cool. 
But if we're taking down um, information and, you know, filling out these reports and sort of, you know, if every month, if, if you're having experiences or you're finding that your senses um, psychically are heightened at certain times, like just, just write it all down and then we can actually see if there is an actual connection between things that are happening. Because at the moment we don't know, I guess, scientifically or without a doubt that there is a connection between the moon and the paranormal. But if we start recording things down, then we're going to have a better idea of, of what's happening. But what we do know is there's nothing more exciting and spookier than investigating underneath the full moon. And so tonight you've got Halloween, you've got full moon, you've got a moon that's a blue moon, and it's a Saturday night. Like it's so perfect to be able to do a paranormal investigation. And guess what? I don't get to do one because I'm in Melbourne and it sucks. <laughs> But At least you get to have fun with dogs. That is true. So um, later tonight when it gets dark, we're going to have our lovely hunt with our torches. Although my other son has told me, Mum, it's not a torch, it's a flashlight. <laughs> um, torch is obviously the Australian term for flashlights. <laughs> um, and, yeah, the kids know all the Americans. So it's like, oh, I want candy. And I'm like, it's not candy, it's lollies. Um but obviously he's used to watching a lot of American TV and um, shows. Do you put your tarot cards out in the full moon? I personally don't, but I know there are a lot of people that do. Um, I'm not um, sort of a person that is a practising tarot card reader. It's just something that I'm learning for myself. But I do know that there are other people that like to put their um, tarot cards out under the moon and again you know crystals um moon water moon water is great um that a lot of people use for protection and things like that um don't accidentally drink it because a lot of people put sort of um different herbs and, and salts and, and things in it as well i have accidentally had a sip of moon water that i thought was regular water and it wasn't very nice so you definitely don't do that mike says happy halloween to you happy halloween uh, Leslie, the fable about witches do uh, rituals in a full moon is from before electricity they could see better at night. That's actually really interesting. And I know Leslie loves um, like folklore and mythology. So I think I'm definitely going to uh, pick your brain at some point, Leslie, because um, I think that, yeah, we could um, have some really cool discussions and ideas and, and things given how much you are into um, mythology. So what is moon water? So moon water is, um, again, it's sort of like um, something that people like to use um, as, as protection and so they'll often um, make um, sit water out under the moon. They'll of, often say like a blessing or a prayer or even a spell. Some people put certain salts and, and herbs in it and they use it um, as a way to, as a form of sort of spiritual protection and, and things like that. And so then it sits out under the moon. You've said your blessings or your prayers and, and you've put all your bits and pieces in it um, and then you bottle it up. And a lot of people, um, like I suppose you could probably liken it a little bit to holy water. Um, some people like to use holy water. So in, in some ways that can be um, similar to that as well. Uh, Perseus, holy water in a sense. Yes, exactly. Um, so, yeah. Um, that's really cool. So, I've, yeah. So I think that's it. I think I have given you your daily dose of um, science. Moonstones are magical. There's just something special about them. Do you want to come and say hello? My other Hi. son. Come over here. Hi. <laughs> that's my other son. It's a whole family affair. They want to be YouTubers when they're older. So they're obviously very um, envious of mum set up with, like, her microphone and her light and her webcam and... And things like that, aren't you? I don't yeah. really have a YouTube channel. I know. Yeah. Yes, I'll. Yeah, but you don't have a webcam and stuff. Yes, you're not old enough yes, to. yes. Yes, they're, they're not quite old enough yet. Yeah. But soon, maybe in about 10 years, you might see Jake and Jesse. Yeah. And Jesse loves the paranormal, don't you? I, I love watching ghosts. Uh, Come over here. With, uh, I love watching ghost videos with um Sarah. My oh. name's Mum, but. <laughs> 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 he does I'll, I'll often find him and he's watching like ghost adventures and things like that and then he yeah. said to me he goes oh mum i think they edit this to make it look scary and i'm like yes he gets it <laughs> so investigators of the future yes but i can guarantee you they will not be at blackrock house until they're 18 because that is mum's kind of getaway 
from the kids yeah, yeah? <laughs> but you know I teach them things and I think it's important as well we um like a lot of the time and and I was kind of like it when they were younger is a lot of people like to kind of shield their children from I guess the the paranormal and things like that because you want them to be innocent and you want to keep them as as kids for as long as possible but I think um if you give them the knowledge that they need, they're, they're more likely to be more empowered with that knowledge. And so it's even things like when they're lying in bed at night and you're, you're hearing, you know, like trees scratching against a window and things like that. It's just teaching them, look, that's the tree and um, and things like that. And so they know what I do and, and what we go out and do and we just take a very honest um, approach with everything and um, I think that, you know, they're, they're going to be better off for it. And I know a lot of um, people have children that they believe have psychic ability and things like that. And I think it's important, you know, not to just kind of make them feel like they're crazy or they just have an invisible friend or something like that because, you know, they do experience that. And you talk to people that are a lot older and are grown up and they will talk about when they were younger and no one believed the things that they were seeing. And there have been, I've heard horrible stories from people that have said that like their families have taken them to church to try and be exercised or that they've been sent to mental institutions and things because they were told they were crazy because they were seeing ghosts and things like that. So I think we need to be a bit more open-minded because um, an article that I, I put up on the blog today, like the paranormal is, is somewhat normal now. Like it's something that we're kind of learning to live with and we know that there's stuff out there. We don't necessarily know exactly what it is, but we know that there's strange strange stuff out there. So paranormal doesn't have to be scary. And that's exactly right. And that's one of the things that I love saying to people. And one of the things that when we do tours out of Black Rock House, we're always saying is, like if you are having an interaction with the spirit, it doesn't have to be negative. And a lot of the time it actually isn't. And a lot of people have that expectation, I think, from television, but it definitely doesn't have to be that way. And I have been told that I am an open channel so I can see people and smell things too. And, you know, if that's something, there's a great book from a friend of mine called Amanda who's from Australian Paranormal Society and she's written a book. Um, I've got it over here somewhere. She's written um, a great book from the mind of a medium and she's someone that has grown up she's someone that has grown up um, all her life having different abilities and so this is her first book and it's all about her her lessons and teachings and, and things like that so if you're someone that wants to learn a bit more about your abilities or develop those abilities I definitely recommend picking up a copy of this book um, it's available worldwide on Amazon and book depository um, or you can head over to the Australian paranormal society page um, and contact Amanda and she can uh, sort you out not to be offensive but not being religious thoughts etc yes um so yeah it, it's, it's quite sad and I think we're in a more modern society now um but these things sadly do do still happen and, and particularly you know when you read like Amanda's story for example and the things that she had to go through when she was younger like you you would not wish that upon anybody and I know um for her it's something that she has wanted to kind of share her story with the world um, in the hope that it will resonate with someone else and that they won't feel so alone. So um, I definitely think that, you know, sometimes we just need to embrace things. And I know I'm a very rational person and I take that very rational approach to paranormal investigation, but it doesn't mean I don't believe. I absolutely believe there's something out there. Like I've experienced things that I cannot understand. My stance is more that I just don't believe everything is paranormal. And um, I've had the, I guess, gift of being able to observe people by running tours. And often you are, when you're running a tour, you kind of, I like to, I just sit back and kind of observe because we make the tours to be about the people and, and not us. And so I get to kind of sit back and observe and you get a really unique perspective that way. And a lot of the time people can get caught up in adrenaline um, of situations and not quite see what's really happening. So I, I do think that, you know, there is stuff going on out there, but as investigators, it's important for us to just embrace all this other knowledge that is out there so that we can be the best investigators and when we are having an experience um, we know that it's not a trivial thing like the wind blowing a door shut and things like that and when that experience does happen like that really profound experience it's something that will stick with you and you'll go you know what I can't debunk that and it, it's something that will probably even change you as a person I know that that happens to me
Because of this, I've been told that I'm a devil child by people who go to church. I'm really sorry that, yeah, that's happened to you, Maxine. Um, but that's that's awful. And un unfortunately, it seems to be like one of those common things that a, a lot of people talk about. But I do definitely, Maxine, for you, I would recommend um, picking up a copy of, of this book from Amanda. Um, I think you'll find a, a lot of information in there that you can resonate with and um yeah, I, I, I think that this will be a really good book for you. Um, yeah, so I think I've waffled on for, for enough uh, time. I have to get to my munchkins who are causing God knows what trouble out in the hallway trying to bomb my stream. But thank you so much for tuning in and um, I'm just going to put up the winners again if you didn't quite see. The winners of the Halloween competition were Natalie Land, Sarah L. Little and Rachel Lindquist. So Natalie and Rachel are both getting a copy of Supernatural Synchronicity and Sarah is getting a copy of Haunted Magazine issue number 27. So I still have copies of issue 27 in stock. Um, you can grab that. And don't forget the new issue of Haunted Magazine number 28. Was uh, Pre-orders were all sent out on Friday, so you'll start receiving that from Monday. Australia Post has been a lot better lately, which is fantastic. Um, I have about half a box of stock left, so get your orders in because once this is gone, it's gone. And for those that requested back issues, um, in the next two weeks they should be um, sent out to me and um, then I'll be able to start, I'll contact those of you that requested special copies and then I will put the rest up for um, on the page. But make sure that you are subscribed to the Haunted newsletter, um, which I will pop a link in the comments. And with the Haunted newsletter, it's dedicated only to Haunted magazine and so it gives you updates when there's a pre-order and I'll also be able to let you know when we have the back orders as well. So is there anything you boys want to say before I end my stream? Um, thank you for... We have to come over because they, the microphone's not that good. Oh, okay. Yeah, microphone's not that good. So what would you like to say to everyone before we go? Um, Happy Halloween. Hopefully you have a good Halloween and make sure to have a fun time. What about you, Jake? Um, make sure to be safe. Oh, that's nice. See the blue moon. See the blue moon. Do whatever you want and... Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, everybody. Thank yeah. you so much for joining in. And let me know as well in the comments if you want me to do more of these kind of streams, like where we talk about a certain topic and and, and delve into it, whether it's, you know, something sciencey or something, myth, myth, you know, with mythology or urban legends or, or things like that. Like I am thinking of getting back into the streams again. I know it's been a really long time. But sometimes, like, my anxiety, like, I talk myself out of doing them. Like, and I don't know why, but that's just what anxiety does to a person. Um, and eventually, when I am allowed at Black Rock House, I will start doing uh, live streams from Black Rock House for you guys again, too. I used to um, kind of check in with you guys before a tour and do a mini investigation. And obviously, I haven't been able to do that this year. But there might be an opportunity where I might be able to get in there before the end of the year. And um, I can maybe take you guys on a little bit of a tour or or things like that but yeah if you if you want more live streams where we talk about a certain topic like let me know and um yeah we'll definitely make that happen so thanks so much for joining it was fun all right bye congratulations to the winners and i will send the winners of a of the competition right, a message yes. bye bye, bye. bye. Happy Halloween.